Have to be getting close. Oops, I'd say we overfilled her a little bit. <laughs> we'll just let that drain down and put the cap on. A little overboard. Alright, so we are on part two of our initial 20 hour break in service here on my Wolverine X4. In part one, we tackled the oil change. Today, in part two, we're going to tackle the final gear oil and the front differential oil. Since I got the Wolverine already backed in here where my good lighting is, we'll start here on the rear differential and get the final drive gear oil changed. So all we're going to need to do this is of course a quart of the gear oil of your choice. Pretty much as long as it's GL4 hypoid oil, you'll be fine. You know, brand, whether you go with traditional or synthetic, that's entirely up to you. I'm just using the good old Dino Valvoline 8W90. 14 millimeter socket. One of these differential oil pumps will make your life so much easier and I'll show you why when we get to that. And of course your catch pan. First thing we gotta do of course is to drain our oil. We we'll throw our catch pan under there. And here's the back of our machine as you can see by the Yamaha. And we're gonna come in here, here's our differential. And the two plugs we need to worry about is our fill plug right here and our drain plug right there. Again, those are both 14 millimeter. One thing I like to do, I got into a habit of doing now because somebody had commented on an earlier video where I changed the differential fluids in one of my Pioneers about how it's always a smart practice to always crack loose the fill plug first because if you have an older machine and that could be you know seized in there and it might not come loose so you may end up draining your differential not be able to get that loose and now you're skunked because you have no oil in there and you can't ride it and you just kind of got to weasel your way in here to get to your drain plug but it should not be overly tight so it shouldn't be too bad there we go there she goes oil looks nice and clean I'm not seeing a bunch of metal flakes now when it comes to fill your differential, one of these little differential oil pumps are absolute lifesavers and I'll show you why. For pretty much every application of differentials you have, you don't have a lot of room in there. And these bottles are big, they're bulky, there really is no good way that you can maneuver in there, you can't get that in there, in order to line up this into the hole. So what these little pumps allow you to do is to get in there nice and easy with the hose and get your oil in there. It simply is just a two piece design. One end's a straw that you simply make sure that's clean. Insert down into your jug of oil. It tightens on. And now all you got to do is pump it. And with this hose, you're able to maneuver this in around different ways to get in there. You know, however you have to get in there. And pump your oil in. Big lifesaver. Okay, our oil is all drained, so we're going to reinstall our drain bolt, making sure that you have not lost your little crush washer on the end there. That's what helps create a seal, so you don't lose any fluid. I'll let you guys stare at my arm as I stick this in here. And these bolts get torqued down to 16 foot-pounds. Look at that, I even rhymed. Unintentionally. Now it's just a matter of sticking the end of our hose in. Open in the fluid. So pretty much what you want to do is fill her up to your fluid gets right to the top of the hole. And I believe the book says it takes about 0.4 quarts to fill up the rear differential. Okay, 
have to be getting close. Oops, I'd say we over her a little bit. Alright, now that I'm done for the most part making a big mess, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall our bolt up here. And it gets torqued down to 16 foot-pounds as well. And that's all there is for the back. Let's move on to the front, and it is just as quick and just as easy. So now the front differential here, it does differ quite a bit from the rear in the fact that the fill hole, if you guys could see, is a lot bigger. It's actually a 21 millimeter. You need a 21 millimeter socket or wrench to get that. And then the drain plug for this is actually going to be a number six Allen head. Which the drain plug for this is underneath when you're at the front of the machine, you're just going to follow under. And you'll see the two bolts here that bolt the skid plate on. And in this next hole right there, you will see our drain plug. And again, that's a number six Allen. Don't know how crazy I am about this drain bolt being an Allen head. As easy as they tend to strip. Uh, maybe something I'm going to end up replacing here one of these days with. A regular bolt. We'll see. All over my hand and I forgot a glove. But looking it over. I'm not seeing a whole lot of metal flakes, which is a good thing. Yeah, she looks to be pretty clean. Which is really good. Couple little tiny metal flakes, but none that the camera is going to pick up. I can see it if I get the light turned just right. Which is normal wear and tear for your differential gears. You get a little bit of metal flaking in there, but as long as you have no big chunks, you're in good shape. Install this guy back on here. Whoa, look at that. Right in between the drippers. Perfect. And the drain bolt gets torqued down to 15 foot pounds. Get my little pump set up here again. And hopefully this time I'm not going to completely overfill the thing and waste a bunch of oil. Especially at the cost of oil nowadays. <coughs> I believe the book calls for the front to take 0.33 quarts or something like that. This hole is not as tight, so I'll be able to see easier when it starts to run out. She's full. Reinstall our fill cap and it gets torqued down to 17 foot pounds. And that is that. So, front and rear differentials, super, super easy to do on the X4. And that'll do us for part two of our 20 hour break in service. The next video I'm going to dedicate solely to changing the transmission oil, which uses the same kind of gear oil that your differentials use. And again, it is nothing too difficult. The hardest part is crawling under the machine. So make sure you guys comment below if this video was a help to you and gave you the confidence to tackle this part of the service yourself. And until next time, keep on riding. Appalachian Mountain Riders is brought to you in part by the following. The Honda Side-by-Side -Side Club, because who knows the machines better than the owners that use them every day. Walker Evans Racing, when the path requires more than just ordinary, head on over to walkerevansracing.com. Torque Locker, from Torque Masters Industries. When you want to explore the unexplored, head on over to torquemasters.com and by my gracious supporters on Patreon.